Welcome back to Fast Market. I'm Alex Coffey alongside Kevin Hinks on this Friday morning. Let's check in on the markets real quick here, Kev. S&P's up four, NASDAQ down 91. The Dow Jones up 134, about four-tenths of 1%. The Russell 2000, after testing the unchanged line, is actually now up a full 11 points, half a percent, retaking uh, its place as the leader early in this session to close out the week. The reason I wanted to check in here, Kev, is because I think that this is the story of the day. I mean, the micro stories are, of course, always important. But on a day where you have uh, arguably the most important economic data point of every month coming out, it is important to constantly check in on the markets. Where do you see things here and what are you looking for as the day progresses? Yeah, not surprising that in a day where you may get a gap opening and then weakness in the NASDAQ, that markets would get a little shaky before they, re they, they, they get their footing. So this market has to get familiar with a rotation where the NASDAQ is not always leading. And that's what I think you're seeing right now, indicative by the SPX only being up less than a, a tenth of a percent. So I'm watching this play out. It looks like has all the characteristics of a rotation, Alex. Yeah, and we'll see if that continues as the day goes on. But for now, it is time for our cash tag segment. I'd like to welcome in TD Ameritrade Network contributor Jenny Horn joining me here in studio. And from likefoil.com, the VP of Research, Megan Brantley, is with us as well. Uh, good morning to both of you. Talking an interesting name here, one that has certainly come up on the radar of the Likefolio team, and so we wanted to make sure we talked about it. It's called Celsius Holdings, but really this is kind of in the energy game, uh, energy uh, drink game, I guess, if you could. Mm -hmm. Of course, we just heard from Monster uh, overnight as well. Yeah, and strong earnings from Monster, which I think is also lifting Celsius today. But actually, I sort of consider myself an expert in the energy drink space, and I have to say that this was a name I actually really hadn't tried, and I think it's really interesting when you consider that this company has has been around for over a decade, but it just went public a few years ago, and it's really seen such a surge. I think sort of, you know, it's become very popular on TikTok is what I'm hearing from all my friends and my 18-year-old brother. So since the start of 2020, it's gained about 17 about oh, 1700 percent which is crazy of course but right now the energy drink market is the fastest growing in the food and beverage segment so you see that benefiting coke pepsi monster but celsius is sort of a newer player in this space and of course much smaller now they just launched a new flavor of their celsius energy drink back at the end of june and they also have this summer campaign going on called what's your vibe where they are in miami and they have celebrity guests and djs and also influencers which i think is a huge reason this brand is sort of taken off over the last year. Now, what the appeal really is for Celsius is that it's supposed to be a better for you energy drink. A lot of people have an issue, of course, with all the different chemicals and ingredients that are in so many of the traditional energy drinks. This one is supposed to be free of sugar, preservatives, artificial colors or flavors, and it has also seven essential vitamins. So, so many people say on social media that they actually take this before they work out, which, you know, right now with this healthy push we're seeing just over the last few years that has been extremely popular. But the CEO actually said, gave some guidance on their sales over the summer and their weekly sales are up in the triple digits from a year-over-year -year basis so they are still growing at a very healthy rate and if you look at this name on a longer term chart say three years you can really see where they've sort of taken off over the last year year and a half now one of the biggest areas for growth is actually outside of the united states now where they have a 10% leading market share in Sweden, and they're growing also in Asia. And I also have to say that Amazon, I think, has been a huge beneficiary for them. Right now, they have about 14% of the market share for the energy drink space on Amazon, and their sales on Amazon are doing very well. Now, I know 14% seems small, but consider, you know, who they're going up against, Mountain Dew, Pepsi, Coke, Rockstar, Red Bull. I mean, the list goes on and on. This is a very crowded space. But, you know, I, I had to talk to my 18-year-old brother because he's always the gauge of what's cool on TikTok. And he said that all his, him and his friends drink this. And so that sort of brings me to our first tweet today, which sort of talks about this tarmic, target age demographic, which says, Celsius, ask anyone under the age of 30 if they like this beverage. Absolutely obsessed. Next monster, I'm long. So I'm not so sure about the next monster because that is my beloved drink, but that actually leads me perfectly into our next tweet, which sort of talks about this loyalty we all have to our favorite beverages, which says, seen so many pictures posted of evidence of high demand in stores. I witnessed it as well here in North Carolina. Sticky space, when someone finds an energy drink they like, they'll be back for more. Healthier than monster, they're making moves on the marketing slash influencer front as well. 
So, you know, my health habits have sort of been assessed on the show in the last two days. I do love Monster. We talked beyond yesterday, Megan. I, I don't think it ended so positively for me. But I do agree with this tweeter in the fact that we all have our allegiances to these brands. And I also think right now with, you know, influencer marketing becoming so much more important than it was a year, year and a half ago even, that right now this brand has benefited from this sort of being right now very cool on TikTok, Instagram, all these different influencer platforms. Am I correct? Yeah, you're exactly right. I think that there are a lot of um, tailwinds propelling Celsius right now. And that's kind of why we wanted to bring it to discuss with you guys, because it's really rare when we see purchase intent rising and accelerating to the rate that we're watching for Celsius. It has essentially just exploded in the past year. Whenever you look at this quarterly bar chart, it's like every quarter it just keeps it keeps growing, which is what you want to see. Obviously, the, there are high growth expectations with a name like Celsius, this newcomer to the market, but whenever you see the execution at this rate, it's pretty impressive. That um, 21 quarter two bar, so the one, the second bar um, from the right, that is what they're about to report on next week. And those purchase intent mentions, so people buying and consuming these Celsius drinks, we have up about 221% year over year. That's actually an acceleration from the last quarter whenever that year over year growth was around 180%. So I think that this is a really strong indicator that they're continuing to um, you know, be propelled forward, be it from this TikTok marketing like you mentioned, but also from this, this trend of consumers you know, being aware of their health and wellness. We see a lot of people talking about wanting to improve their energy levels. And I say this, I use the improving energy versus just straight caffeine, because this is kind of the niche that Celsius has placed themselves in, because this is seen as more of a wellness drink, at least in the eyes of consumers. So when people are talking about Celsius, they're talking about gives me energy versus maybe a monster, you know, you're, you're looking for that hit of caffeine. And I know that, you know, I, I'm personally, I love monster as well. I've tried this Celsius. These are very, these feel very different um, in whenever as a consumer. And so I think that this is just an interesting niche to watch for Celsius. They're definitely, you know, capitalizing well and they're connecting well with this consumer that may be a little bit more health conscious. Um, and then this is, they're, they're just executing really well to see purchase intent growth to this level is really impressive. All right, Jenny Horn. You cannot spend your whole day all jacked up on Mountain Dew and coffee. You have to find a more healthier drink to do. And I think we found one for you, Jenny. I think the, the ingredients in this drink, green tea, very good, ginger, calcium, chromium, B vitamins and vitamin C, along with a little bit of caffeine. I think this is a better choice for you, Jenny, than let's say Monster or Red Bull or Rockstar that haven't committed to the healthy formula that Celsius has, Jenny. We're worried about your health, Jenny. And this is Kevin telling you to make good decisions. You need to switch to this drink and get off the Mountain Dew, Jenny. I do. And okay, no, now I'm curious, Megan, because you've tried it. So make no mistake, yeah. Kevin, I'm not drinking a monster before I work out. I'm not that crazy. But this is a drink <laughs> people do. I saw all over Twitter, they drink actually like a pre workout. So you've tried yeah. it, Megan, and you say that they have very different effects. So I'm curious, does it have that same energy sort of effect that a monster does? Because I'm thinking <laughs> not so much with all these natural ingredients Kevin just listed. <laughs> Yeah, you're exactly right. Just from my personal experience, I don't know about, um, you know, mainstream, how everyone feels about this, but I think you keyed into something really interesting in that a lot of times when we listen to people talking about drinking Celsius, they are, they're using it for workouts. They're talking about, you know, drinking this before they go into their hot yoga class. And um, I'm definitely not, you know, drinking Monster before my workout. I'm drinking it, you know, before I start my day, before I actually start working. So I think that there is a little bit of room for both of these energy drinks to exist amongst each other but you can see here that Celsius does have that really high happiness that's one area where it's outperforming and then obviously that just explosive growth rate but it is the newcomer here and so that that positioning in the upper right hand corner of the chart that's where you want to be especially as a you know a relative newcomer to the market who's trying to take market share and so we're, we're definitely seeing them gain some traction but i still think you know these these two names celsius and monster can definitely coexist but maybe they just have different applications Megan, I think the data for the most part speaks for itself here. I mean, this is about as positive of a story we've seen you guys paint uh, in quite some time, particularly on a name that 
maybe is, as I kind of phrase, overlooked to some extent, uh, yeah. given uh, that it hasn't been public all that long. But uh, my question to you is a, is a little bit different and taking this from more of a macro uh, standpoint, because, you know, not everyone is maybe going to uh, find a, a name like Celsius and want to jump right in to that name if they're not super familiar with it. But I think there's still a takeaway here, even for those who are maybe hesitant on, on the name, and that is... Is this just another example of this new approach to marketing? If you have a strong product and you're a company and you want to get that product to the marketplace, that using the, the influencer uh, kind of model or, or going into social media and starting there is where you're going to have the highest effectiveness in terms of marketing? Because it seems like it's working well for this company as it has for so many others. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. I think another interesting kind of marketing play, just for some background, you know, one thing that Celsius um, promotes itself as is being thermogenic, which the way that it helps to or proposes to, you know, increase your metabolism is by raising your body temperature, raising your heart rate. And that, I mean, thermo that ties right into its name, Celsius, right? So it's raising your temperature. It's raising your these increased rates of like metabolic output and things of that nature. At least that's what it's trying to do. So I think that that, that lines up and that's an interesting kind of play on the actual functionality of the drink. Mm -hmm. I think that consumers are increasingly looking for these functional ingredients and things that will help them just perform better. And so this is one that it's definitely being propelled by kind of these macro trends right now that we're watching, just in overall health and wellness, but also like you mentioned, just the marketing, all of those things are kind of clicking in line with each other. And so, Megan, I guess the final question here as we wrap the conversation, the stock's clearly been a winner. Uh, the chart is very yeah. evident of that. But your data seems to be at least keeping pace with it. Are you worried about the price level of the stock at this point, or is it still just such a positive picture that you guys like this one to the upside? I think that, you know, long term, we definitely like this one to the upside. We think that this is very early in Celsius's story. You know, we've been bullish when we first added this company to coverage. This company was trading below six dollars, which is insane. But we put out another bullish alert in April whenever shares were trading just under sixty dollars. So obviously we've seen we've seen growth since then. So there could be just some near term volatility volatility, but we are seeing this these insane levels of consumer demand, lots of consumer buzz and extremely high consumer happiness. So we're looking at any type of pullbacks as um, accumulation opportunities. Megan Brantley, thanks as always. The VP of Research at LikeFolio.com. Always an interesting conversation. I love when we get these overlooked names to, to get us thinking about some new things. Have a great weekend, and thanks for joining us. Jenny, you know